Hey everybody, Justin Zane here, along with... Howdy homie, Sid Swami, and that sound that's like a jet plane taking off is <laughs> Justin's PS3 that's like freaking 10 years old and has never been cleaned. I don't think anybody could possibly hear it. Oh, dude, I don't think anybody could possibly hear us over that. I think I'm going deaf from sitting too close to it. No, I'm pretty sure everybody can hear us. But anyway, we are here with another video and here with WrestleMania 35 predictions, as well as our opinions on the uh, Hall of Famers that are going to the Hall of Fame this year. Yep. So first, let's start off with the predictions for WrestleMania 35. Are we doing the pre-show matches too, or just the main? Pre-show matches too, yeah. Okay. So and of the course, women's battle royal. I'm gonna pick Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega. Yeah. <laughs> I believe I'm gonna pick. Uh... Wow. Uh, I think I'm going to pick Asuka. It's definitely not going to be Asuka. Um, so, for the Cruiserweight Championship match... Actually, the men... Oh, yeah. The Cruiserweight Championship match is going to be the kickoff show, yeah. Um, I'm going to pick Buddy Murphy. I think that guy's going to be a Bruno-like champion until, like, Johnny Gargano gets sent to 205 Live or something, or, like... Maybe Umberto Carrillo will take him down someday. Umberto Carrillo? Yeah, you haven't seen Umberto Carrillo? Oh, that guy's awesome, man. I bet it was Carrillo Hib or ah, I don't know how to say his name, but I think I'm gonna with uh gonna go with Tony Nice on this one, the premier athlete. Now, how about the uh, Andre the Giant <laughs> Memorial Battle Royal? Um, I'm going to say Michael Jost. Michael Jost? Yeah. You want one of the Saturday Night Live guys to win? It's good. I, I think it would be funny. I think I'm going with Braun Strowman because there's no way he's going to allow those guys to win. All right. Now it's on to the main... Also, I predict that Braun Strowman was probably going to show up on Saturday Night Live this week. Somebody's going to get me paid. <laughs> well, a bunch of jobbers that... Who do you think is going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal PS4? Or PS3? Who thinks it's going to be the Jets? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Uh, main uh, main one, show stuff. I want to say that isn't one of the tag team matches in the pre-show too. It's you, like you uh, the, the one SmackDown of, tag team tag team titles. No, no, I think it's gonna be just the cruiserweight match in the battle royal. Oh, okay. Yeah. But let's go ahead and get into the main show and one of those SmackDown and the other tag team titles. Of course, is the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Fatal Four Way Match between the Usos, The Bar, Rusev, and Shinsuke Nakamura, and uh, The Bar. I think I already said The Bar. Okay, and then you said four teams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or did you say Alistair Black and Ricochet? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, okay. Alistair Black and Ricochet. Yeah, the there we go. Teams. Yeah. That would be pretty cool if Alistair Black and Ricochet won. I don't think they will do. And so that's why I'm going to go for the Usos to retain here because, you know, they just signed a new contract for five years. And I think that contract said that they have to be champions the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go with the uh, new tag team of uh, Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura. Because uh, they've been doing pretty well together. As far as I know. Next is uh, pretty much of a joke of a Raw Tag Team title match that was just made official today. <laughs> the Revival are going to be taking on, get this, 
Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Can I just ask a question, really? When did losers with a with like a 100 plus losing streak ever earn title matches? I'm pretty sure that Zack Ryder won the last uh, WrestleMania match he was in, but it was so long ago. Because the last WrestleMania match I remember Zack Ryder being in was that ladder match at WrestleMania 32. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship. I'm actually talking about Kurt Hawkins. Oh. Yeah, well, how awesome of a WrestleMania moment would it be for him to win his first uh, match on the main roster at WrestleMania, though? It would be pretty epic, <laughs> but I probably don't see it happening. I mean, with so many losses, I feel like Kurt Hawkins just needs to give it up. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Top Guys. Me too. I like when top guys are on my TV. They make me say, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Next, we have the, uh, we have a dream match scenario as AJ Styles faces Randy Orton. Oh, dude, I'm so hyped for this match. That's like the one match. It's had very little build, but it was good. He's like, you failed a drug test. You're, <laughs> fail- you're failing drug tests. Drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, but I think Randy Orton has proven time and time again that he, he's made SmackDown Live his, his trademark house that he built. So this is pretty much going to determine that. I say I'm going to go with the Viper. I don't know, man. I think AJ Styles is going to win because. I was back down last Tuesday, Randy Orton already did the RKO out of nowhere. That that should have happened at WrestleMania. He should have saved that. He should have just taken the forearm. Now AJ Styles is going to know not to fucking hit the phenomenal forearm when Randy Orton's standing up. <laughs> I don't know. He may actually surprise us again and actually catch AJ Styles again. Yeah, I don't know, man. AJ Styles, uh, you know, he he lost his first WrestleMania match, I think, right? He, he lost against Jericho at WrestleMania. Yeah. So, but he hasn't lost a match at WrestleMania since then. Yeah, true, but but he, he got his dick completely fucking violated last year at WrestleMania. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like. They're not going to do a new street thing with AJ, but I feel like AJ is going to be like the Mr. WrestleMania of this generation. I just, I'm a, I can't go against AJ at WrestleMania. I feel like AJ at WrestleMania is like a super strong version of AJ. Kind of like Undertaker at WrestleMania. Or it was kind of like Undertaker at WrestleMania. Undertaker at WrestleMania is still badass. Yeah. He didn't lose, is he, is he didn't he lose easily. To Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, it just he did because you know he couldn't over, you know overcome their power. Right. And so, right. that's pointless. What's, what's the next match? Oh, speaking of Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre, which is another match I'm pretty stoked on. Um, Roman Reigns, uh, you know, he just had his big comeback. I feel like you know. The story leading up to this, Drew has just been kicking the shit out of Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. He's just fucking Dean Ambrose up. And I think that Roman Reigns is going to win at WrestleMania. He's a big dog. Me too. I, I believe Roman Reigns is going to spear the living life out of Drew McIntyre, the so-called Scottish psychopath. I mean, yeah, this, the road to WrestleMania for Roman Reigns has been one crazy ride. I mean... He's recovered from leukemia. From leukemia, he had he had one final show, showdown with Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre at Fastlane, along, along with his Shield brothers Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Now he's got to deal with Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania again, and I feel like Roman Reigns is gonna load up a Superman punch, and then a spear is gonna put the Scottish psychopath away. 
I don't know. I think that probably Drew McIntyre will shake off the first couple of Superman punches and probably the first few. It's going to be like, I wish this was like a hardcore match or like a street fight or something like that because these guys could really fuck each other up. Like, if there's no disqualifications, it'd be cool. I, you remember when Roman Reigns had his shit with uh, Braun Strowman, and it was just, like, crazy fucking destruction all the time? I hope oh, oh, Superman God. Man just got eliminated. He's like, you big funny fucking back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, moving on to our next match, which is a Falls Count Anywhere match between... The most musty daddy superstar of all time, The Miz, going up against Face Jr. versus the best wrestler in the world, Shane McMahon. Well, he may want you to do it like he's got, like he got the ring announcer sat down to do it. The best in the world, Shane McMahon. Remember that time Shane McMahon did the pipe bomb? Uh, in case you guys don't get don't get the joke on what he's doing here, he's replacing CM Punk with Shane McMahon, replacing every everything that CM Punk done. <laughs> Remember that time that Shane McMahon uh, got fired on his wedding day when we married AJ Lee? That's fucked up. Man. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm definitely predicting for Shane McMahon. He's the best in the world. And he hasn't won at Mania since he came back. Uh, well, he did win at like, WrestleMania that last, team match last year, but I feel like that was more Daniel Bryan's victory than his. But then again, that was the precursor to Shane McMahon becoming the best in the world. So. I'm, I'm predicting the Miz because I don't think Shane McMahon has any idea what his, he's got himself into when messing with the Miz and his family. Yeah, okay. Next, we have a fatal four-way tag team matchup for the new WWE Women's Tag Team Championship as the I, as the Boston Hug Connection defend against the Samoan Slaughterhouse, what I call them, Snoresville, Nia Jackson, Tamina, going up against the iconic Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, going up against the Divas of Doom, Natalia, and Dota Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. I feel like they might go with the whole Sasha Banks has never defended a title successfully thing. So I think we're going to see new champions. Uh, just like how you earned that when I got my rematch on World of Fortune last week. <laughs> Dude, they might start doing a new streak because Nia Jax she hasn't been beaten at WrestleMania man. This could be the beginning of a new streak. I'm going to say Nia Jax and Tamina dude. Oh god help us. Nia Jax might be the new like WrestleMania streak person. Well, well I'm going for something crazy here and it would be pretty shocking if they did. I'm going with the Divas of Doom. I mean history shows that superstars that can't came out of retirement, usually win their match. So, the Divas of Doom could be making a huge comeback, and Beth Phoenix could be coming out of retirement. It's for sure. That it's the, would be awesome, dude. I like Beth Phoenix. Like a Lamazon. She's like the female version of Kevin Nash. She's big and sexy. <laughs> She's kind of like the new generation of China. She's bigger than Edge. Her husband. There you go. <laughs> I wonder if she ever gorilla presses Edge and like slams him into bed and then just like hot sob him and pins him with her vagina. Oh, is it? She's a three count. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, next match is going to be. Uh, I think we got to head on into like the championship matches. Most of the. Most of the good Oh, champions. the United States championship match is still uh, on. potentially, potentially on. on. So, um, I'm going to say Joe to retain, though. If, especially if Rey Mysterio is coming in there with a sprained ankle. Like, Samoa Joe is such a vicious bastard. 
no kidding, no kidding about that. But if Rick, but Rey Mysterio has been known in fight, fighting off big, big, uh, big injuries or big men in WrestleMania matches, and Rey Mysterio can pull off an underdog story here and actually become United States champion at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Or, well, yeah, the Dead A Championship. When challenger Kofi Kingston of the New Day faces the greatest Dead A Champion of all time, the Planet Champion, the new Daniel Bryan. Uh, so this is how this match is going to go down. Kofi and the New Day, they're going to come out with like the most awesome entrance. Dude. I don't know what it's going to be, but then Daniel Bryan and Air Pro are going to come down. Daniel Bryan is going to get in the ring, and then he's going to kiss Air Pro, and then as soon as he turns around, trouble in paradise, and he's going to lose, and he's going to break his WrestleMania record and lose in 10 seconds. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Because New Day Rock. New Day Rock. How awesome would that be if that actually happened? Like, people would be like, what the fuck? Kofi Mania, buddy. Oh, come on now. There's no way it's going to happen. There's going to have to be at least one match on WrestleMania that's super fast like that. Is that right? Maybe, maybe uh, now before we get get to it, I'm going to say Daniel Bryan's going to retain, retain and continue his, his journey into saving the planet. Now, we want to talk about matches that might end up end quickly. We should probably talk about the Intercontinental Championship match at, when Bobby Lashley defends against the Demon Finn Balor. Uh, dude, I've seen how Raw he was like. Ah. It was like, I'm going to come this year, Bobby Lashley. Yeah, motherfucker. I done got all painted up. And I'm ready to eat a butthole. Oh. Uh, yeah, man. Demon Balor at WrestleMania. Fuck yeah. Have we even gotten Demon Balor at WrestleMania? I think he's only ever been at SummerSlam. Yeah, he's only been Demon at SummerSlam. This is going to be then Demon Balor's first appearance at WrestleMania. Okay, so do you think... Let's do a prop bet. Prop bet? Since, since we've already established that Finn Balor is going to win. Do you think the match will be longer than his entrance? We're going to actually record this to find out. Yeah, we're going to actually record to see if Finn Balor's entrance is going to be longer than the match. <laughs> uh, and hopefully we don't get copyright strike. I'm going to say yes, the match will be longer. I think, the match, I think the match is going to be quick, quicker than the entry. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we got a prop bet on that match then. Yep. <laughs> oh, look, fucking Johnny. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> it's John Laurinaitis. <laughs> oh, excuse me. My name is John Laurinaitis, and I'm in this WWE 13 simulated Royal Rumble. All right, now, on to the next match. We have... Universal Championship. When the Royal Rumble winner Seth Rollins takes on Brock Lesnar. Uh, and Brock Lesnar, I will change your name of Monday Night Raw to Monday Night Raw starring Brock Lesnar. You remember that? I, rem- I remember that. I remember that. Uh, yeah, Brock Lesnar is going to win at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins. He's gonna burn it down for sure, but man, you really, uh, man, you really want think the WrestleMania crowd's gonna freaking riot if Brock Lesnar retains? Nah, man, Suplex City, bitch. Don't be so happy because Kofi's gonna win in ten seconds <laughs> after Daniel Bryan kisses Eric Rowan. <laughs> oh my god! All right, then. Oh, um, hold on. Before we get into the man that we. I think no, we missed, like, no, one... we got another match before yeah. the main event, but uh, I'm saying, like, 
the reason I think that Brock Lesnar is going to retain is because Brock Lesnar is not going to be leaving the WWE until it's time for him to go back to UFC, and it's going to take a while. And he's going to do the event at uh, Saudi Arabia coming up in June, and, you know, I just don't see him losing the Universal Championship because he's Brock fucking Lesnar, dude. Like, yeah, that's true. But speaking are you, of... Are you predicting for Brock Lesnar as well? Or are you predicting for Seth Rollins? I'm predicting for Seth Rollins. I believe he's going to earn his monster of being the Beast Slayer and save the Universal Championship and let it be... And he's going to prove what a real fighting champion looks like. He's not going to be able to punch Brock Lesnar in his dick and kick him in the dick and stay there. Unless, so, they, unless, they, unless they do a referee bump, then chances are Seth Rollins will... <laughs> That's the only thing that Seth could possibly save Seth Rollins. Yeah, because he's not going to be able to fucking survive Suplex City, bro. Yeah. But on, but on the terms that you mentioned of Brock Lesnar one day leaving the WWE, that's exactly what a WWE Hall of Famer is going to be doing. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the final match of Kurt Angle's WWE career when he goes one-on-one with Baron Corbin. Oh, yeah, man. It's time for Kurt Angle to get his revenge. Baron Corbin fucking has treated Kurt Angle like shit. He's done so much fucked up shit. This is the last final business for Kurt Angle to fucking take care of. I'm going to say Kurt Angle's going to win. Um, everybody seems to be pretty upset that Kurt Angle actually chose Baron so maybe WWE is going to do like a swerve sort sort of thing where Baron Corbin might get hurt or injured. And By the Undertaker? Ooh. That would be, the Undertaker that would... would fight Kurt Angle? Or, or it could be John Cena. Dude, Undertaker would be way better. Well, well John Cena made his date. They view and face Kurt Angle in his first match. In WrestleMania right? Undertaker. And if WrestleMania Undertaker comes to fight Kurt Angle, then I predict Undertaker. Oh, man. What if John Cena comes to fight Kurt Angle? Who do you think is going to win? I believe Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, Kurt, Kurt Angle beat, beat, beat him the night John Cena did. Yeah, but John Cena has the lightning punch now. Um, and then before... Which is super exciting, and you know, probably like the one we're going to talk about the most. Yeah. We got to talk about the old man match, where it is. Oh, oh yeah. Career on the line. Batista versus Triple H. AJ, you made anything you please. Yeah, you want to come to TV. So, um, no holds barred, and if Triple H loses, he has to retire from in-ring competition. Man, Triple H's last match. Justin liked it, but... And I understand why he liked it, because he was only watching Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels did really good. But After not being in the ring for eight Everybody weeks. else, man. Triple H got fucking injured trying to do a bump. Um, they all fucked up in Saudi Arabia. That match terrible. Uh, Shawn Michaels did not make it good to watch for anybody except Justin. Um, I still think it was a pretty good match. I don't see how how fans, some fans can complain about that match. I mean, I can see how they can complain about most, most of the matches on the cards. I think one, one in particular was the Braun Strowman Brock Lesnar matchup because of stupid Baron Corbin. That's why I feel like Kurt Angle should kick Corbin's butt because, hey, he screwed over Strowman. But it's going to be like a street fight, right? No holds barred. No, no holds barred, yeah. So, um, so maybe uh, help, help your best friend save his career again, Sean. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think that uh, Triple H needs to retire. Batista, man, he could possibly come back and, like, have another run, dude. I mean, 
I know he's like a Hollywood movie star now, but he's still badass. And that would be awesome for Batista to come back in WWE. And maybe he could be the guy to take down Brock Lesnar. Because, uh, you know, like, I don't think Batista and Brock Lesnar ever really had a chance to face each other, right? Batista and Brock Lesnar? No. Nah, man, like, Brock Lesnar had left the company as Batista was coming in. Yeah. And that could be the guy. That, that could be the guy to take down Brock. Yeah, but Batista said on Monday Night Raw when the match was made was that it was going to be the match to end his career on his terms, but and also end the career on Triple H's terms. Oh, so Batista doesn't plan to have any more matches after this? Nope. At nope, he just plans to have this one match with Triple H. Well, damn, in that case, I'm going to change my prediction and say Triple H will win. Then. There you go. And with no holds barred, I think... I think we could get some interference from Shawn Michaels. <laughs> now we could also get some interference from John Cena, too. Man. I think that Batista should come back. We should have a match with Brock Lesnar. We should have another match with John Cena because he's never beaten John Cena. Like, there's a lot of shit. Well, he has. Well, Batista right has actually beaten John Cena one on one before. Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, main event. First ever women's main event of WrestleMania. And this one, it just feels so legit. Like, a lot of the stuff in the build-up to it is kind of fucked up and convoluted. Like, with Becky getting suspended and all that shit. And then there was the thing with the, with the knee. <laughs> but after this last episode of Monday Night Raw, like, it really came together fucking super hype. Yeah, that after that segment on Monday Night Raw, Raw this past Monday, this match is guaranteed to be a major bloodfest, which could turn into all bloody murder. I mean, Ronda Rousey, this is uh, this is like a serious motherfucking dude. Like Ronda Rousey is a seriously badass wrestler. Like she had just come, <coughs> up. she went straight to the WWE main roster. In her first match at WrestleMania last year, and she's just been fucking awesome. Like all of her matches have been fucking either good to excellent, um, and I just think that's great. And a lot of people are saying that Ronda Rousey's gonna leave, and I don't believe that really. I think that you know she's still got the stuff she's got to do in WWE. Especially with her friend Shayna Baszler being in NXT still, like that's a yeah. huge, that's a huge fucking storyline once Shayna Baszler comes up. Yeah, um, they're gonna do like a four on four horsewomen dead A versus MMA matchup, possibly a Survivor Series. Maybe, and um, I know that somebody's got to tap out. But he's bound to a triple threat winner take all. So who's going on with all the gold? Yeah. I don't know, man. This is like the one I'm least confident in. I can't decide mm-hmm. who's going to win it. If it's going to be Ronda or Becky. Or, woo, my prediction, Charlotte Flair. <laughs> I'm going to have to go Ronda Rousey, man. Ronda Rousey is fucking hot. Uh, she's on fire, dude. I'm she hasn't lost a match yet. I'm surprised you're not going for Becky Lynch. I'm really surprised I'm not going for Becky Lynch either. I I was totally for Becky Lynch doing it until I saw Monday Night Raw this week. And man, fucking Ronda Rousey like tried to steal a police car, but she wrecked yeah. into another police car. Yeah, there's nothing more I mean, badass than that. Ronda Rousey, I mean, that, fucking that badass, whole dude. that whole freaking brawl segment was like freaking eyes open. Eyes open crazy. Like, like Charlotte, Charlotte need Ronda right, right in her head, right into the freaking back of that car window. That back seat car window when it was already broken when Ronda kicked, kicked, and kicked it and broke it. <laughs> Charlotte coming out of, 
Then they tried to put Becky in Charlotte car. Charlotte came charging out and kicked Becky. They, then, of course, they put what you mentioned, Ron, Ron, Ron and Becky in the same car, and they started kicking the shit out of each other. Yeah. Then, like you said, Ronda somehow driving the car while she was handcuffed, drove it right into the back of the car in front of her. Look, dude, there's nobody more badass than that. You look at the WrestleMania poster, and it's like Becky smiling and, and Charlotte smiling, and they both like have to put on this big smile. They're like, oh, really? Ronda Rousey. Rousey. Ronda Rousey's just got that smirk like, I'm about to fucking fuck these bitches up. Dude, Ronda Rousey's badass. Vince McMahon really is all about Ronda Rousey. She is fucking money, dude. No, no, no doubt about it. She's winning at WrestleMania. You're picking Charlotte. Becky might win, dude. Becky would be my second place pick. So Charlotte's like my third place pick for sure. So we way disagree on the outcome of that match. Well, I actually do agree with your second place pick because I'm actually winning. So you're kind of on the fence. Too, right? Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence between Becky and Becky and Charlotte because right. Ronda Rousey is with his pin is really tarnishing the whole thing. Yeah, you're all like she's the MMA and shit like that, but she hasn't done MMA ever since she got in WWE, and neither has Shayna Baszler. So we just gotta accept that like people do MMA and come back. What about Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era? He used to do MMA. Yeah, people do MMA. So. Uh, before we continue on, I think I actually screwed up in my prediction for the Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania. I'm actually going to predict uh, Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke instead of Asuka. That's probably more likely. I don't think Asuka, man. They fucked up. I mean, even though, it's, even though she may be going in this one arm or one of those two. I mean, after Ronda, after Ronda Rousey injured Dana Brooke's arm, I'm not quite sure. No kidding. Hall of Fame shit. So in my in my opinion but Yeah, let's go let's run down the Hall of Fame. Let's run down the Hall of Fame of the NXT back to Okay, so before we talk about DX, because there's so much shit we talk about DX. Who do you think is like your favorite non DX inductee into the Hall of Fame? Oh boy. Well there there's a lot of non non inductees. So we'll, we'll list through them real quick. You got my favorite. Honky Tonk Man. And it was hard to go back on Booker Man. I love Booker. I don't really care too much for Stevie Ray. I've listened to his podcast. I don't like. I don't know. I just don't vibe with Stevie Ray. I do like Booker T, though. <laughs> um, and then you have Tori Wilson. Now, Tori, I don't know that much. I. Uh, I, won't, I do think she had something to do with Raven, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know too much about, like, older women's wrestling. I only really got into it, like, recently since I've been on this YouTube channel. Um, and then I'm trying to think if I forgot anybody. There's, like, a person who got the warrior. Yeah, I think it's one of the uh, people that has been working with that AE for like 30 years. Oh, yeah, and then um, there's the Hart Foundation, too, right? Bret Hart and Jim the Animal Bynard. All right. right. It's more it's well deserving because Jim's dead. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, I didn't catch yeah. who the recipient of the Warrior Award was. Cause, uh, so that's not really a talking point here. Yeah. But I, I do want to talk about the Honky Tonk Man for just a minute. So the Honky Tonk Man is a really fucking underrated guy. And the fact that he's not already in the WWE Hall of Fame um, when so many people are. Oh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. There we go. Okay. And he'll be inducted by none other than, it, than a close, very close friend of his, the immortal Hulk Hogan brother. Yeah, he is Hulk Hogan's best friend. Like, anywhere that Hulk Hogan went, Beefcake, Hogan, yeah. they probably have worked out somewhere together. But, yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure Bruce, Bruce has cut, cut, some, cut 
cut off a lot of hair throughout his career. So, uh, the Honkstar Man is the main guy I want to talk about in the Hall of Fame. Let me get this out of the way, dude. Like, in the time when Hulk Hogan was working uh, with, I want to say it was uh, Hulk Hogan and Yokozuna or Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, uh, you also had the Honky Tonk Man uh, working with Macho Man Randy Savage. Also, he worked with the Ultimate Warrior. Had a very quick match to the County of Championship in SummerSlam, which Honky Tonk Man completely lost in like seconds to Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, but uh, that guy was a very underrated wrestler, man. Uh, Honky Tonk Man, the guy really had a great thing going on. And then if you listen to his shoot interviews, Honky Tonk Man shoot interviews. Um, I definitely recommend checking any of those out. Um, you can probably find them for free on YouTube. Um, or, or, or possibly find most of his greatest moments on the WWE Network. Right, man. Um, Harlem Heat, WCW shit is fucking... Ten-time WCW tag team champion. WCW shit is like... We used to watch the shit out of WCW back in the day. Yeah. But I never really dug Harlem Heat that much, man. It wasn't until um, Booker T's role as a commentator on SmackDown that I really started to love Booker T. <laughs> because I just thought he was such a funny, like... Shucky duck, shucky ducky, quack, quack. And with Harlem Heat induction into... Hall of Fame. That makes Booker T a two-time Hall of Famer. Yeah, as well as Brett the Hitman Hart, uh, who we're watching in this fucking Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble, Rumble yeah. that PS3 is playing right now. And, and of course for DX, Shawn Michaels is a two-time Hall of Famer. We aren't talking about DX yet. Not yet. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, Harlem Heat those guys never had a match. I only know who it is. Yeah. Both, both very great tag team Tory Wilson. Together. Say something about Tory Wilson because I don't really have anything to say about Well, I, I think I've had, had my share of favorite highlights of Tory Wilson's career. One of them that chopped to my mind, of course, was uh, her Playboy Pill fight match she had with Kenneth Michelle at WrestleMania 22. Now on the DX. DX. And it's about fucking time that they put China in the Hall of Fame. China should have been in the Hall of Fame. And, like, really, they got to put her in solo. She needs to be a two time Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. But, hey, China, even with DX or without DX, has had a great career. And a, a lot of her trademark moments. But, uh, now that she's in the Hall of Fame, like, that is definitely long overdue. Yep. And besides that, like, did you ever think that fucking uh, Billy Gunn would be <laughs> in the WWE Hall of Fame? Bullet <laughs> Club Hunters <laughs> himself. <laughs> uh, he, for those of y'all that don't watch NJCW, uh, Billy Gunn was in a... Uh, Temporary faction called Bullet Club Hunters with Yoshitatsu. <laughs> and uh, it was fucking terrible. Uh, but, Billy Gunn is fucking awesome, though, man. Yeah, but in DX, he was known as uh, Mr. Backside over here. <laughs> what, you don't say ass? Wah, wah. So, badass Billy Gunn. Um, they're going to be putting in uh, Road Dog. That's that D O double G employee, technically, right? What's that? Road Dog, he's the still he still works with WWE. I see him on there sometimes. Yeah, I think he does most of the backstage stuff. Yeah. And then um Triple H going in the Hall of Fame, of course. Yeah. See that's another thing that 
with him going to the Hall of Fame, I just feel like he's going to do his last match at WrestleMania. But it fucking sucks that Batista, there's no way Batista is going to, Batista could be universal champion again. That would be awesome, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, if he manages to get the universal title off Brock Lesnar, if, if Batista changes his mind, about this being his last match and actually come back. Does he think he go have a match in Saudi Arabia and shit? Yeah, and all the power is his. And of course, the other one of the DX originators, Shawn Michaels, a two-time Hall of Famer. Yeah, man. I want to say that maybe at some point Shawn Michaels could be the first three-time Hall of Famer. Oh, because what oh, if they put the Rock? The Rock. Oh, the Rocker. The yes. Fame. Yeah. Or, uh, or like uh, what's another way that he, he could dudes be... with attitudes with Kevin Nash, oh, and yeah. Kevin Nash <laughs> and Shawn Michaels. Or I don't know, man. I feel like uh, dude, Shawn Michaels is—he's now working on NXT. Yeah, he's a coach coach for the Performance Center. If I ever, if I ever. Uh, Want to train to become a superstar? I want Shawn Michaels to be my coach and the manager. Yeah, you gotta go over there to the performance center. A lot of people like, uh, you know, are gonna be seeing matches at Takeover this weekend, and those matches are probably gonna be uh, set up by Shawn Michaels. <laughs> so, I mean, there's probably. Uh, Lot of shit to come. I mean, WrestleMania weekend's gonna be huge. And then there's some non wrestling, there's some non WWE shows going on on WrestleMania weekend that are pretty important to you. Uh, you got the New Japan G1 Supercard, Switch Blade, Jay White versus Okada for the NJPW Championship. It's a pretty big match. You know, it's not often the NJPW Championship is defended on uh, non-Japanese soil, so that's cool for fans and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, WrestleMania is going to be long as fuck, and we're all going to be tired of shit and hungover on Monday yeah. morning. Yeah, like 15, 16, to 17 matches. It took I mean, us 40 minutes to talk I, I, about it. Took, yeah, it took... Weekend. It took that much about to about NXT. Um, I'm not take, gonna watch the Hall of Fame. I'm just gonna watch all the clips of it on YouTube. Yeah, because we're mostly, yeah, because this guy's mostly on NXT Takeover and WrestleMania. Yep. So yeah, tell us about your predictions on the prop bets. Yeah, uh, we're interested in knowing what you think about the women's championship match. Yeah what, rest, yeah, what surprise, yeah, what surprise Yeah, what surprising moments do you guys think will happen at WrestleMania? Leave a com- comment down below to share your thoughts. Leave a like and comment and subscribe. So long guys.